Hi everybody and welcome back to the December edition of Starry Sky News. This month I've got three deep sky astrophotography targets for you to image as well as a new telescope and mount to talk about and some other related astronomy news. So let's get right into it with three deep sky targets that you can image in December. Okay, so we're heading towards winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, and this month we are pointing towards the constellations of Orion and Monoceros. So I've actually got four targets on this list for you, and you can either image these as individual targets, you'll be able to get a couple of targets at least in the field of view, or if you're using a really wide field setup, then you'll be able to get all of these targets in the same field of view. And they are the Orion Nebula, it's actually five targets, the Orion Nebula along with the Running Man Nebula, the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae, and the Rosette Nebula. So no matter what gear you're using, there is something here for everybody in this list, because if you are using a 14 millimeter lens and a crop sensor DSLR or full frame DSLR, then you will be able to image all of these in one field of view and it will make for an amazing nightscape shot. Or if you've got a longer focal length telescope, then you can image each of these targets individually. Now I'll start with the horse head and flame nebulae. These are really easy to find. I put them in as two objects, but together because Generally, unless you've got all but the deepest of reaches of telescope, then you're going to be imaging both of these at the same time because they pretty much always fall into the same field of view. You don't need a go-to system to be able to find the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae because if you look at Orion's belt and then use the bottom star Alnatak and point your imaging gear towards that star, then that is where the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae are. So just go ahead and point your imaging gear towards the bottom star in Orion's belt and you will be able to image these two targets no problem at all. Next up on the list is the Orion Nebula and again, if you're imaging the Orion Nebula, you'll be able to get the Running Man Nebula into the same field of view as well, generally. It's a really easy deep sky object to find because it is one of the very few that are actually visible to the naked eye, which is why it is so popular among beginner astrophotographers because if you locate Orion's belt and essentially draw a line southeast, then you'll see something in the sky that looks like a star but that is actually the Orion Nebula so it's really easy to find anybody will be able to image this with any gear that they have you can even image this with a smartphone it will show up obviously it won't be as good but you could perhaps point your telescope towards it and just hold up your smartphone and that will show up the Orion Nebula and it will look great. And last on this list is the Rosette Nebula, which is located in the constellation of Monoceros. Now, like I said earlier, if you've got a really wide field setup, then you'll be able to get the Rosette Nebula into the same field of view as the other targets that I've just mentioned as well, and it makes for an absolutely incredible nightscape shot. This is one of my all-time favourite targets. I always return to this target year after year. I think it's an absolutely beautiful target, either as the Rosette rotation or the rotation that makes it look like a skull. I think they both look great. It also looks awesome in the show palette as well if you're using a mono camera with show filters. It just looks amazing no matter how it's imaged and I really recommend that everybody has that on their list of targets for imaging this month and also in the coming months as well. Okay moving on to equipment news and I, I really wish I had like an Alan Partridge voiceover for these videos. Equipment news. <laughs> news now if you've if you've got no idea who alan partridge is then i suggest you pause this video or stop this video completely and just google alan partridge <laughs> clips uh, for some of the finest british comedy you will find uh, anyway i want to talk to you about a new telescope and a new mount so the telescope that i want to talk to you about is the ascar 65 phq flat field astrograph this is a quintuplet apochromatic refractor telescope 65 millimeter with a focal length of 416 mil and a focal ratio of f 6.4 and it's the latest to join the ascar refractor telescope range it looks like it'll be a great telescope i've read some great reviews from people about these telescopes on social media and the price i think is 
pretty reasonable. Um, it starts at £990 until the 31st of December, and then from the 1st of January, it goes up to £1,090. And it comes in the usual um, green and white colours from the Ascar range, but there is actually a limited edition version of this that replaces the green with pink. Now, when I looked, there were only 50 of these available on the First Light Optics website, at least. And so if you want the pink version, then I suggest that you head on over to First Light Optics pretty quickly and get your order in before they all sell out. And apologies if they've already sold out before this video goes live. <laughs> it looks like a great little scope, and I know that these Ascar refractors are becoming really popular now, so this looks like it would be a great addition to anybody's astro imaging gear. And like I say, actually, I don't think the price is too bad at all so i've got links to it in the description down below for both the green and the pink version okay the next thing i want to talk to you about is a new mount from skywatcher and that is the skywatcher az gti x dual saddle alt azimuth astronomy mount that's its full title that's easy to remember isn't it skywatcher have released a dual saddled version of their really popular gti alt as mount now is this something that you should be excited about well let's have a look through the specs and then you can decide for yourself the mount creates its own wi-fi so you don't need to be piggybacking off your own internet connection which means that you can take this mount anywhere and image with it by controlling it with your smartphone or tablet using the SynScan app for iOS and Android devices. There is also a SynScan handset that you can buy, but that is at an additional cost. It has a total payload capacity of 10 kilograms and a maximum side payload capacity of 6 kilograms. So you can either have 10 kilograms in total but the maximum that you can only have on one side at a time is six. So you can either have, you know, two five kilogram setups on each side, or you could have one six and one four, for example. Now I've never used the Skywatcher GTI mount, but I think a dual saddled version of the GTI mount is something that would be worth adding to anyone's arsenal to be able to have two setups running on one portable mount that you can control from your phone, I think is an absolutely awesome thing to be able to do. Especially as the mount itself only actually weighs two kilograms, so you're not lumping around a big, heavy EQ6 R Pro type of mount in your backpack, which is enough to break anyone's back. I really don't recommend that you try that because it's too massive and too heavy. You can buy the Skywatcher AZ GTI X for £399 for the mount only, or if you want to include a tripod, then that price goes up to £479 and I think both of those prices are really reasonable for the amount of gear that you're getting there. When I last looked they were in stock online so there are links in the description down below for you to go and check out and better hurry while stocks last because I think we can all guarantee that they will sell out pretty quickly. Now I want to talk to you about going back to the moon and also some new European Space Agency astronauts but before I do that let's hear from the sponsor of today's video Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you about all kinds of STEM topics and they have thousands of lessons available from beginner all the way up to advanced with new content being added all the time. I learn best by doing. For me, it's the best way to learn and lately I've been going through the special relativity course and I think this course will resonate a lot with you too. This course includes space-time paradoxes, particle physics, space-time curvature, plus many more. Yesterday I went through the photons lesson, something that we all care deeply about in astrophotography. It's been fascinating reading and learning about Einstein's research. I'm able to fit brilliance into my life by dedicating just 30 minutes to it each day, and it's amazing how much I've learned so far. I'm learning about the science behind the galaxies and nebulae that I take images of, as well as writing code simulations using Python. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash astro exploring. The first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription plan. The link is in the description down below. And thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now, unless you've been living in a cave without any access to the outside world whatsoever, you will have seen, of course, the news story about Artemis 1 that launched on the 16th of November. 
to finally start our exploration back to the moon. The primary goals for Artemis 1 are to demonstrate Orion's systems in a spaceflight environment and ensure a safe re-entry, descent, splashdown and recovery prior to the first flight with crew on Artemis 2. Artemis 1 launched on the 16th of November after two failed attempts in August and September due to technical glitches and a fuel leak. Now you might ask why are we going back to the moon when we did this in the 60s? This doesn't really seem like much of an achievement at all, does it? Well, I guess if you only look at it from that perspective, then no, you're not wrong. However, NASA has big plans for human spaceflight exploration, however you want to word that, and going to Mars is a big part of those plans. NASA has plans to do that in the next 20 years. However, while it only takes three days to get to the moon with the current technology, it would also take nine months to get to Mars. So there's a little bit of a way to go yet, but Artemis 1 is the first step in that journey. So it's a really incredible achievement. It's something that hasn't been done for several decades. So the fact that NASA have been able to prove that this now works is phenomenal and I really look forward to the Artemis 2 launch which will hopefully have astronauts aboard and NASA intends to have this completed by 2025 so not much of a wait at all. Now the Orion spacecraft is due to splash back down on the 11th of December which will be the day before this video goes live but a week after I'm filming it so it will either be a great congratulations it worked way to go team or a oh, better look next time but at least there were no people on board that got hurt um could go either way now speaking of space travel the european space agency has finished its selection process for its latest tranche of new astronauts it's the first time in 13 years that the european space agency has done a recruitment process for new astronauts there were over 22 and a half thousand applicants in total and out of that 22 and a half thousand only 17 were selected that is five career astronauts 11 reserve astronauts and one disabled astronaut the new astronauts will start their 12-month basic training program in spring of 2023 and i think it's great to see such a diverse set of candidates from the member states of the european space agency including a candidate with a disability the first time that the european space agency has recruited an astronaut with a disability and they will be taking part in the para astronaut feasibility program which seeks to develop options for the inclusion of astronauts with disabilities congratulations to all who were selected not that any of them will be watching this video but congratulations anyway thank you so much for watching this edition of starry sky news don't forget to click on the link in the description below to check out brilliant remember the first 200 people will get 20 percent off the annual premium subscription plan don't forget to like comment share subscribe etc and i will see you in the next video